Hey, hello guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sadat Bachapati and first of all, thank you so much that you have loved and liked my first and to end project. So today I have launched my another project that is totally based on Delta tables, Delta Lake. Okay, and I will be making a project on top of Delta Lake house and using PySpark SQL with the help of Databricks. Okay, and I will be covering a basic stuff also first of all and then I will be covering a end-to-end -end project which is based on the real-time scenarios. Okay, so first understand, you know, first first we will understand what is the syllabus of the course and you know how the course look like. So you can see my screen over here. So this is the, uh, this is the project, right, build real-time Delta Lake project using PySpark and it's Arch SQL with Databricks. And if I go down a little bit then you can see what you will be learning right so you will be learning the learning hands-on learning with real world project learn to leverage data lake for data management utilize database platform efficiently and gain in-depth understanding of data lake features okay and here i have you know i have given two modules so first module will be you know where i will be teaching you that you know what is delta lake how we can read how we can write and what are the other features of delta lake using database so if i just click over here then first module will be the syllabus of the course and we will talk about this in this in 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 this video and then we have this architecture introduction of delta lake how the delta table differs from the normal tables create a delta table you non know, generate columns in delta table how to read how to write how to update how to delete using PySpark and Spark SQL both, okay? And then we will be having, you know, merge statement where merge is really very useful in terms of incremental load, okay? And then we have understanding the transaction logs in underscore delta underscore log folder. What does it mean? You know, why why a delta table creates this folder? What is, what is having this folder, right? So all these things I have covered in this, you know, tutorials. Then how we can restore a delta table to a previous versions then how to add constant like you know not null ch uh, check and so on then how we can add user metadata and information also in our table suppose i am i am doing some operation so i need to define something so that i will understand in future right so you know we can define some user metadata information also then we have schema evolution and enforcement in delta lake what is shallow and deep clone of a delta table let's say you have a production data you want to you you want to copy the production data to the you no know, dev world space or dev environment then why would you copy the same thing why why can't you create a clone out of it right so it is up to you if you want to create a deep clone or shallow clone right then we have uh, how to enable change data field in delta table and then reduce small file issues using optimized method cool and up and with this uh, we will be having a end-to-end -end project i will be you know uploading a module soon and then after completing both, you will be getting your certification. And uh, yes, this is all about this course. And you can see that already 16 learners have already enrolled it. And it's like in I, I uploaded this course or launched this course one week back only. And you can see 16 learners have already purchased it. Now we'll see the syllabus of the course. So syllabus of the course is module 1. I, I have already told you. And module 2 is the end-to-end -end project using Delta Lake. So let's understand what is there in the project so the sources you know we have sources so we will be having different type of sources like sql tables csv files blob storage json files and xml files so in this in this project i have covered xml files also and maybe i will add some extra sources also maybe api and something like that okay then we will have a branch layer where we will be we will be you know fetching the fetching the things using PySpark code or python code i will be not using any adf and all okay I will be writing a complete Python or I mean complete Python I will be using complete database only then we will have a silver layer we will where we will cleanse the data and then we will have a gold layer so where we will write our business logic so in the first part we are here we will you know fetch the data using full load and incremental load because incremental load is very useful nowadays and maybe I will be I will be also adding a, a streaming uh, data also in it then we have cleansing layer right here we will create some utility or framework if you have taken my the my first course as your end to end course then there also i build some utilities to cleanse the uh, data right but here also i will be creating some another utility you know with some other an, another way to uh, to, uh, to cleanse the data okay then we have lob layer there we will be we will be doing modeling complete modeling like fact table and dimension table we will be creating 
and uh, yes and then we will be scheduling this pipeline using databricks okay using databricks using workflows and yes that's it i mean you know and if you if you want to build this project you do not need to you know pay any single amount what you can do instead you know you can you can create a free account on community edition versions of databricks and there you can do that see in that you cannot you cannot create a scope okay this scope means you know we cannot we cannot link our key vault we we cannot link our key vault with our database so instead you can do everything and we cannot schedule the pipeline so if you do not like scheduling the pipeline it is very simple thing okay you you should focus on the methods you know how how we can pull the data how we can write the data how we can clean the data using some techniques so i will be also using over here cache parses what is the partition when to use the partition how many partition i should use so i will try to cover all these things also in this video so that you will also get some spark ka architecture wala details also like you know how to write a optimization code so in the in the first project i did not you know uh, uh, tell you in a very deep so but in this course i will tell you in very deep way that you know how you should actually write your code okay so i will be completely using uh, pyspark only and in some of the cases i will be using spark sql also okay so yeah that's it for today's video i hope that you have understood and if you wanna if you wanna take this course please take it now and yeah it is very useful you will learn at least the basic stuff first and then in the next week or maybe after 10 to 15 days i will be launching a end to end project also okay so thank you bye bye